So, good evening. Welcome. Welcome you guys. Thanks for joining us today. So, my name is uh, Fran Gomez. This is Cesar Jimenez. We Hi. are working at Divo. And before we start the presentation, we would like to play with you and show you uh, what I want to do today with you and what I want to uh, with the, the, the this presentation is just uh, about the facial recognition, so we can start making this, okay? Mm -hmm. So first, we will show two videos. Okay, you can show the videos, okay? This video is just a video from our company. <laughs> it's a great long time. <laughs> it's a great company. <laughs> and in this in this case, we are using a, a, a training set that contains a lot of images from from Raúl and from Samuel, and we are detecting these guys in a in a very well way. Okay. So if we try to do this just using the face from the LinkedIn contact, okay, we are getting all our LinkedIn contacts. We can show that we, we can detect who of these guys of the company are in our contact list. So here you can see there are a lot of unknowns because the training set is mm, too poor. We have only one image from from its fr face. From its face, this is not a good uh, training set, but you can see all my contacts, and you will see the contact that's, that we are setting uh, Cesar and me. Mm -hmm. Okay? So they are eating a lot. <laughs> okay, the idea is make this right now, okay? Do you want to play? <laughs> so this mobile phone is just streaming the video to the laptop, okay? The quality is not good, okay? And the idea is we are trying to know who of you are in my LinkedIn contacts. It's better than a scan the budget, okay? So can I <laughs> get your image? <laughs> we are not recording. We are not it's recording. Can, can I? Live <laughs> and streaming. I don't know if you are in my contacts. And I? No. I am in your contacts? Y maybe. No? No, I need yes. More. <laughs> yes. I have only one photo from LinkedIn, so the facial recognition is not, not so good. Yeah, but. Okay, but. Appears. Put here, put here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, any of you are in our contacts? No. No. <laughs> This could be fail. Huh? Yeah. Well, we are talking about false positives and false negatives. How many years has uh, your photo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is just a, a, a demo to show what kind of things we are trying to do today, okay? So let's continue with the presentation. Our agenda today is just talking about open source intelligence, video analysis, of course, and the face recognition. And at the end, we will show an example of an, an use, a use case to use this kind of technology aptly to some of. Uh, we will see. We will see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's start with the open source intelligence. How many of you know what is open source intelligence? <laughs> More. <laughs> yeah. All of you know what is open source intelligence. For me, the best um, definition starts like this. Information does not have to be secret to be valuable. Mm -hmm. Okay? Another definition could be this. Open source intelligence, the data collect from publicly uh, available Valuable. sources to be used in an intelligent context. An intelligent context is the place is when you have all the information that you need to take a good decision. Yeah. Okay? So, 
You can use open source intelligence to the national security, counter-terrorists. You can use to monitor competitors, to identity persons. Many applications, like even you can get the ROI from your advertisement in the social media. Yes, in this case, don't identify faces, identify logos, brands, and these kind of things. And count the amount of time of your logo are in your screens, in TV, in something like that. So today we are trying to, to show you the capability of the video analysis. So this is because by 2021, 80% of the world's internet traffic video traffic will be video. Okay? So this is a forecast. And for this year, the forecast is that 90 million of terabytes or more will be video on internet. Mm. And only 2% of this video is from surveillance uh, cameras. Yes. So these data are from Cisco. So video is an important source and it's growing because every day much uh, much more video are loved by users because mm -hmm. users don't want to text or write. Users yes. want to listen and talk. Okay? We are live CBA channels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's move to the next point and I'd like to share with you an example of how video processing can help you to obtain more information. Mm -hmm. Okay? We sorry but the video has uh, sensitive content. Okay? Yeah. yeah, sorry. The video is part of the ISIS propaganda uh, campaign. I don't know if you are you know about the ISIS propaganda. I I think so. So you can show in the video how some terrorists kill some hostages, mm. and the idea is to know where and when the video was recorded, okay? And to do that, the first question, where the video was recorded, you can use image uh, from, from Google Maps and correlate with the building, roads, and buses in the video to get the location of the video. Mm -hmm. When you get the location of the video, you can know where the when the video was recorded. Okay? Mm -hmm. To get this information, you can use the uh, blue spots in the ground. Yes. And thanks to the Google History database, you can compare and get when the video was recorded. So before the video analysis, analysis, you only know that some people were killed. And after the video processing, you know when and where this, uh, their people uh, were killed. Okay. So today we are focused on facial recognition mm -hmm. because it's uh, one of the machine learning applications that has had more advantages uh, in recent years. So before Cesar shows you how the, the, the facial recognition works in a hard way, I will try to, 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 to share with you my six simple steps to understand the facial recognition. So the first step is you need to know where the face is. You can use Hawk or CNN algorithms, okay? And then you can obtain the landmarks, and you need to align the, the image to get the correct uh, landmarks. So you, you can scale, rotate, or stretch the image. And when you have the, the face and the landmarks aligned, you can uh, obtain the vector array that defines your, your face, okay? The vector array is just a 128 uh, values that define the face, and you can use this to uh, compare with all other faces that you have in your database. So, yeah. Cesar, explain these guys the process in the hard way. Okay. I hope this is not the, the hard way, but... Okay, in the first step, we try to identify where are the faces in the image or in the videos. We need the coordinates of the face that appears in this video or in this image. Well, this is not a simple task because, like you can see, Will Ferrer and Chad Smith are like a twins. But <laughs> they are not family. <laughs> no, no, but identify person is not a simple task. If you think if identify objects is more easy, and I see you, it's easy to identify and difference, uh, find difference between muffins and chihuahuas, all the people say yes, but this is not a easy way. <laughs> okay, like you can see in this image, which are chihuahuas <laughs> and which are muffins. It's very complicated to say. 
Okay. The recognition of uh, these faces, where are the faces in the image? Uh, in, this, in this talk, we talk about HOG, histogram of oriented gradients, and CNN, convolutional neural network. Well, start with the histogram of oriented gradients to locate face in image. Well, the HOG technique was developed in 2005 and uh, try to find uh, when the darkness points of the image move and draw oriented gradients towards these directions. You can obtain uh, some image, like you can see, is a pattern of my face, of a pattern of a front face, and you can try to find this kind of patterns along the wall image in the video. Well, when you can see, this kind of pattern is very, is very easy to, to use in the in image, but uh, have a problem with the orientation of the object. This kind of patterns is invariant uh, when the face are in the left corner or <coughs> in the right corner of the image, but this variant is the faces in the, in the front or by side of this kind of things. Well, for classificate this kind of patterns in, 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 an, in an image, in a video, and identify where are faces and where, what object objects are not faces, we use a support vector machine algorithm. This is an old <laughs> algorithm, and try to identify uh, what objects are faces or not faces. This is based in a, in a create an optimal hyperplane that divide the plane in two dimensions. You divide the plane in two areas, and in one area are faces, and in the other area are not faces. Well, in n dimensions, like we use in the Hawk algorithm, this hyperplane is a surface in n dimensions. Okay, the other, the other techniques that we can use to identify where are the faces are the convolutional neural networks, and it's while used in, uh, uh, to address various problems in recent years, and have the advantage that is designed to require much lower me uh, processing than traditional deep neural networks. Deep networks are inspired in the uh, connectivity patterns in the neurons of the cortex of the visual cortex of animals. And the first step in the convolutional neural network is a convolutional operation. It's very easy. You start with a matrix of the image with all the values of each point in the image and apply a kernel. This is this kind of matrix. In this case, three times three matrix and make operation like you can see, uh, plus and, and multiplicate the values and obtain a final matrix with the representative uh, objects. Values. Yes, yeah. values of the objects. Well, for example, if you, if you try to detect vertical borders or vertical edge in an image, you can choose a matrix like you can see, the kernel, and for the for this kind of image, black and white image, you can obtain the vertical border of uh, the image in the center of the matrix, normalizing these values to 255 for a grayscale image. Okay, you can choose or you can use GIMP tool to make this kind of, of operations and play with it because the game tool have a convolutional matrix operation. In this case, with my photo, apply a kernel like you can see in the previous image with one, zero, and minus one in each column and obtain the vertical edge of an image. Well, the next operation in convolutional neural network is a subsampling, it's a reducing the amount of data and one of the most used is max pooling. In this case, the max pooling operation is very easy to explain. You choose a matrix side, in this case, two times two, 
and divide the image in regions and choose for each region the highest value of each uh, section. Seven, nine, eight, and four in the image, like you can see. Finally, with all these kind of operations, convolutional, subsampling, convolutional, subsampling, you obtain a lot of matrix, and this matrix are flattening in a vector, and this vector is the feed for a traditional neural network. A traditional neural network with her inputs, her activation functions, her outputs, and the output is the location of the face. Caution. You can use CNN in CNN videos because the wall can implode by the recursion. <laughs> okay, when you use CNN or HOG? Well, CNN algorithm is more precise in object recognition, but in contrast, HOG is faster in processing. You can use for processing online or, or video in real time. Yes. Well, <coughs> these techniques of object recognition, face recognition in our case, can be used to identify a lot of objects like buildings, cars, flags, like you can see in the image, or guns, guns and roses, <laughs> all the things. I love rock. <laughs> okay. The next step is find some specific points in the faces, call it called landmarks. These points identify some parts of the face, the nose, the chin, and why do you need these points? Because in the next step, we obtain a code for each face and need all the face aligned to the same position. We identify this object and with operation like scaling, rotating, stretching, you can align all the face to the same position. In this case, like you can see, this affine transformation deforms a little the image, but obtain a better result in the next step. <laughs> the next step is face encoding. Face encoding is used to, to obtain a numerical code for a face, and this is an investigation in 2015 by Google and use a normal neural network and this network is training with, with triplets. These triplets are two faces belong to, the, to one person and uh, one face belongs to the other person. This allows to minimize the distance between false positive, false negative, positives and negative results and finally obtain a vector like you can see. These are the 128 dimensions or 120 measurements yeah. of each face. At, and this is like a vehicle plate of a yeah. person. In this case, this, uh, these numbers don't correspond with any measurements of the face. It's not the distance between the eyes <coughs> or the length of the nose. There are only the exit or the output of the neural network training with triplets. Well, after that, go to the last step, the facial recognition. And in this step, you can obtain true positive if you can, if you find in this example, in this example, Cesar is in the image and Cesar is detected. One false positive is Cesar is not in the image, but Cesar is detected. A false negative in, in the case that Cesar is in the image but Cesar is not detected. <coughs> and a true negative if Cesar is not in the image and Cesar is not detected. We, we try to maximize these two results because there are the good results. Well, for this we use a tolerance and uh, we use the Euclidean distance between vectors, the 128 vectors in the, next, in the previous steps, and use a tolerance, and if the Euclidean distance between these two vectors are in our tolerant range, the person is the, the same person. Same person. Yeah. Or well, we know that the person is the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You can move the tolerance to balance between true negative, false positive, true positive, true negatives. And like you can see, you can obtain a balance between false positive rate and sensitivity in a rock curve, like you can see in other machine learning uh, uh, algorithms. Yeah. Well, all of these steps allow you to identify the person that's know and have in our models database to identify this person, but what happened with the persons that don't know? The unknown unknowns. unknowns. I need this. Okay, it was the hard way. No? So, nah. any of you know where this expression comes from? Unknown unknowns? Nobody? No problem. You know. Perfect. Let us to show where this expression comes from. Uh, so go, Mr. Ransfeld. There are reports that there is no evidence of a direct link between Baghdad and some of these terrorist organizations. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknowns. Unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. <laughs> Excuse me, but is there are reports that there is. So, unknown unknowns. Why? Why we are talking about unknown unknowns in facial recognition presentation? Okay, this is because our use case today is related to the ISIS propaganda. Okay? ISIS propaganda, a social network, is, is trying to um, focus on spread their ideas on obviously the fear. So social networks <coughs> are trying to, uh, <coughs> to stop this kind of uh, content, but they are failing. So we, are, we will try to use this content, okay? And the idea is just to identify who is who in this kind of videos. So the most of the person in the, in the videos are unknown unknowns, anonymous people that uh, we don't know, okay? And we need to classify as the first step to identify them. Mm -hmm. So time to be to see the video and the, the video no the demo <laughs> <laughs> cross your finger says yeah this is the hard part okay <laughs> here we have this is the the topology okay w that we are using i i w we will explain the the topology and the architecture so we need to start the topology right now because the process is uh, so slow so we start the process. This is a, a, a local storm cluster. Yes. I don't know if you are familiar with this kind of technology, but we will see the, the topology and the architecture, don't worry. And when this is this is start, we need to put two videos or one? Like you prefer. All in, all in. <laughs> all in. This and what is the no she this uh, this one okay so let the system works and we will explain you the the architecture and the the technology that we are we are using here yes let the system run and <laughs> let the river run, <laughs> let the river run. <laughs> so we are using OpenCV just obviously to to process the 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 video image okay so this library started in by Intel a lot of years ago. And we are using Apache Storm as the real-time framework processing. And we are uh, just using Dlib because there are a lot of uh, machine learning algorithms and a lot of uh, tools to process the, the image. Okay? Mm -hmm. And with uh, some libraries from Python and Java, we are just uh, componing the, the system. So the topology. It's as simple as you can see here, okay? The topology is just getting uh, videos from uh, internet. In this case, we are just trying videos from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And the spot, the first part of the topology, is getting this video and split the video to sampling and sending these uh, frames to the next step. The next step is just the identify faces. Uh, this uh, step is just trying to get the faces that are in the um, in the image. Here we are using Hog 
because this is a real-time system. We can use uh, CNN. And then, in the next step, we are trying to recognize who is in this, in this image, okay? So, when we know that a people is in the, in the image, we store in the known people database, okay? The wanted, the wanted people <coughs> models are training with CNN, okay? Because we have, it's an offline process and we can spend a lot of time to, to train in the, the data set, okay? And the last step, and the more complicated is, what can we do with all the people that we don't know? That people that we don't have in our, in our model, in our training data set. The unknown people, we are just trying to put in the unknown people database, and we are trying to uh, put in a, another database the relationship between these guys, mm -hmm. okay? To know where a guy uh, is, okay? And where other guys are in the same video. So the problem here is how can group the unknowns? Okay, so Cesar, please. The other hard part. The other hard part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In this part, we, we try and we use three kinds of algorithms. The first of one is as a hash similarity or a percentual hash called p-hash. p-hash is very famous because it's, it's, uh, it's utile in, in detecting brands and logos in fake webs in phishing cases because find the similarity of two images and offer a number, or the output is a number, yes. and if this number is similar, the image are similar. In this case, don't work properly for us because the image uh, for the background, the brightness, the face position, offer different values and don't work properly. No. Well, the, the, next step, the, yes, yes. the next step is making a data set with all the face that we can find in videos, a data set with the 128 values or, or measurements of each face that appear in the video. With this data set, we try to use k-means algorithms, and k-means algorithms work properly but have a problem. In this algorithm, you obtain a partition of the space of the example space, uh, and all the data is around a center point called, cen called centroid. And in this case, uh, work properly if you know how many different peoples are in videos. In this case, it's difficult to obtain how many different uh, persons are in the videos, and the estimation of this number with different algorithms don't work properly for us in our case. Well, but the finally, win the winner, the winner is <laughs> the Chinese whisper algorithm. This algorithm is very useful and is have yes. a wide use in processing natural language, and is based on the creation of a graph with all the face that we identify in the previous steps with uh, 128 yes, vector yes. dimensions and joining the nodes and follow these easy three steps like you can see. It's very easy to implement and very easy to use because it's a, a simple algorithm but for us uh, offer the, the, the best, best the result. Better results, yeah. yeah, the best result. This kind of aggrupation allow, allow us to respond to questions like in which video this person appear or this person in what other videos appears. Finally, with this algorithm, we have different unknown, unknowns in groups and uh, these groups uh, have uh, the same person and but different, different person of other groups. Well, if you need to improve the, the, the results of the facial recognition, non, non in videos, uh, in YouTube videos like we see, like uh, uh, surveillance cameras of this kind of technology, you can use 
a three-dimensional <coughs> face recognition technology. This technology can obtain higher accuracy than their two-dimensions two counterparts. Yes, for this you need a special camera like the 3D camera in iPhones, in face ID technology, is used this kind of camera, or Intel RealSense camera, and these cameras project a mesh of infrared points to, to the face, or use twin cameras to, to obtain an additional dimension that apport more data to, the, to, to our analysis. In this case, if you have more data in the most of the machine learning algorithm, you can obtain better results. In this case, the three-dimensional face recognition is based in this simple, simple task, obtain more data for the same face. So it's time to, to demo epic or fail. We don't know. <laughs> don't worry, we have a video. <laughs> <laughs> so. The idea is that the, the, uh, the topology is working. We're just uh, identifying, extracting, and whispering, okay? So here are the, the results. In the file system, we have the people that we know, these two guys, and the people that we don't know here, and the people that we don't know classified, okay? Hey, so. To show this, it's better to use a graph, okay? So in this case, I don't remember who is who. This is the unknown groups. No, yeah. I prefer to, the known people, okay? We will see the known people. <laughs> there Reference? are no known people. <laughs> <laughs> so in the... No, 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 no. Ah. It's hey. okay. <laughs> Okay, known people. These are the two guys that we don't we know. We have yeah. these guys in the training set. Oui. This is uh, Abdullah One Faisal, person? Abdullah <laughs> Faisal, and Abu Barak uh, Al Baghdadi. Okay, so we can see all the all the faces, all the images from this guy, and the videos where the images are. Okay, and in the other side we have the unknown groups, but this is the. Here we have all the unknown people that is not classified, and here we have the groups from the whisper classificate, for yes. example. This guy, <laughs> okay, and this we have that this guy is in the same group. We have one, two, three videos from where this guy are is, but we we don't know who who this guy is. Okay, mm -hmm. so the idea is just to classify these guys as a first step to, to, to get the identified. You can use now, for example, an external service for, from internet or an intelligence uh, services for the, the police, mm -hmm. etc. Um, with this database, you can see in which other videos this person appears and these kind of things. We don't know who is this person but we can trace this person across a lot of videos, a lot of images, and this kind of thing. So, okay, we talk about the technology, and the technology has a social impact. Yeah. So, right now, supermarkets or retailers are using this kind of technology to monitor the people that are in the supermarkets. Okay? Yes, Walmart is, Walmart is trying with this kind of technology to identify the, the customers. They are trying to know what is your face when you see a new product, when you see an offer, etc. Okay? Tesla is watching you <laughs> every time that you cross the street. Okay? Yeah. This is a, a good information that in a moment in the future Tesla sell to other companies. Okay? Mm -hmm. And even you can buy it in a Snapchat just showing what you want. Okay? You can yeah. show a thing in, in a Snapchat and then buy the, yeah. the and thing. offer an Amazon product. So if you have no time to create this kind of system, you can buy this uh, camera in Amazon and you obtain a lot of machine learning algorithms uh, and a 
pre-training uh, data set, you have a lot of uh, tools and try to use in your, uh, in your house or in yeah. your company, I don't know. And all of this is boxes in a, in a camera. It's very easy to use. Beside these company examples, we have the most controversial and my favorite example, that is the uh, China Social Score Program. Okay, I don't know if you are familiar with this program, but China is developing a, a, a program that's trying to qualificate or to put a, um, uh, remember the, uh, just a score, yeah, yeah, a score. in uh, each okay. citizen, and they, they, the, the program will be nationwide by 2020. Okay, yeah. imagine the place where <laughs> all your it's a big brother. <laughs> it's mm. not a good. So we need to defense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is not good for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the idea is you can spend money and, for example, buy this justice cap. Okay. This is just a simple cap that cont that has a, a LED, an infrared, that uh, blinds the, the cameras. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even you can buy these um, glasses, it's yeah. more cheaper. <laughs> yeah. It's in a Kickstarter project, yeah. okay? In this case, don't have uh, infrared LEDs. It's working, reflect the infrareds of, a, the of a camera and blinks the camera. Works better with uh, cameras with night vision okay. because the night vision of the cameras are only with infrared LEDs. <laughs> There are the infrared. Blades. The infrared, the infrared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the cheaper is this. Okay. Yeah. You can buy some makeup. Yes. The it's worked it work very well because all the makeup. Uh, cheat, 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 the, the cheat the system. Cheat the system. Don't identify the, the nose, don't identify the cheek. And this worked very well. Okay. There are no cameras that identify you, but all the guys remember you. <laughs> Yeah, all the people remember <laughs> you. <laughs> and this is our takeaway for you today. The first is open source intelligence must include video processing. Okay, it's an important data yeah. source. Okay, we have a great state of the art. We have a lot of tools. We have a lot of technology. And if you are afraid, just you can buy a horse mask. Like us. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous, but it's funny. <laughs> we can okay. answer the question with the mask. Okay. <laughs> so that's all, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, if you have questions. Or